Ooh, Dennis Chapman comes in with a good one. Are you ready? Chapman coming in hot! It's a great sound, isn't it? Kick, 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 yeah. du, 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 du. He's got a lot on here, so let's just cherry pick off the list. Are you ready? Yep. Possible trade partners for Shaq Lawson. Who would be the last man cut on the on the 53-man roster? Uh, record that gets the OC fired. Always love talking about that. Uh, let's see Ooh. here. Uh, sleepers, comeback player, difference makers, and best local beer. So lots there. Wow. Lots. lots, lots. Are you not entertained? Subscribe now! Uh, possible trade partners for Shaq. I, realistically, I don't see Shaq getting traded unless they can secure a player with more than one year on their deal, right? So we keep talking, oh, yeah. trade Shaq for Clowney. And I mean, we've, we've been, we've talked about that, right? I'm not gonna say that I'm, I'm gonna champion a move of trading Shaq for Clowney if you include a draft pick with it because Clowney's on the last year of his deal. So I, I think you're kind of swapping to swap at that point, right? So, yeah, and that's they're only swapping to swap if they think Clowney and Lawson are on level, right? But why make a lateral move that way for for a guy that's younger? Or you're saying? or if you or if you can work out the extension with, um, or if you can work out the extension with um, with Clowney. The problem is if you're going to pay Clowney, it's going to cost you down the road because you're looking to play pay Clowney for six years at least he's gonna want at least six years okay fine well that's gonna impact Milano that's gonna impact Dawkins that's gonna impact Trey White because you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to pay him in, in yeah. a, a season after this one yeah you know you start looking down the line of players that you need to pay and truthfully the Bills built everything that we talk about is great on one and two year deals for everybody they brought in yeah so I again you start giving big contracts out and you're just you're chop you, you know you chop your nose off to spite your face at some point you yeah. know and that's and it's kind of where you sit well so do I see them trading Shaq it would have to be for a player that has multiple years on their deal and I don't know whom that would be I came I came at it from a different angle sometimes when uh, I was looking yesterday I was listen usually it takes about three years for a guy that comes into a program, especially a coordinator, to finally get some of his guys that he wants, all right? Carolina, all right? 2014, going back a little bit, five years ago. Sean McDermott was defensive coordinator. He was going into his third year as a defensive coordinator on the Carolina Panthers. He had, as his, one of his defensive tackles was Star Latula Lay. You know who his two defensive ends were? Let me guess, Charles Johnson, Charles Johnson, Mario Addison were on one side. You know who's on the other one? Mm -mm. Greg Hardy. Oh! Like, yeah. what? But yeah. the, the interesting thing about it was Addison and Johnson, and I looked at their profiles, and Hardy. But Hardy was a freak of nature. Like, yeah. well, let's, let's, call, let's call him what, it, what he was. He was the same size as Addison and Johnson, but... I mean, those guys were 6'3", 270, 275 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, that's not that's not Hughes. No. Hughes is a burner over on that side. Lawson fits that profile of that big body guy of a bookend. That's that guy. So I don't know if it, it's kind of it kind of works both ways. Like when we talked about on the Shaq Lawson uh, episode, they may not want to pay him ten million, but they're not entire. Even though he wasn't their guy. He's not entirely not their guy. He is their book and defensive end that they like, especially with Murphy. There's questions about him. From a profile standpoint, I get that. Yeah. Their issue with with Shaq was always buy-in, his effort level. You know, they had to challenge him last season. And they're and they, challenging him again, yeah. They have to challenge him again by not picking up his options. You're saying, look, got to do it again. That's it. We are worried that when we pay you, you are done. That's it. Mm -hmm. So show up. I like it. I like it. I yeah. Like so it. I, I, like I don't. Option. I don't really know if, if Shaq's can. No. I mean, you could deal him, but I don't really know if there's anybody out either. there that, if you're going to deal him, you're dealing him for somebody with more than just one year on their contract. Yeah, it'd be different if it was going into the 2018 season. But then again, he didn't. He didn't produce anything. Mm -hmm. right. So how were you going to trade him? Right. So. Right.
What's the uh, next one on Chapman's hot list? Uh, best beer. Best local, local beer. beer? Um, parcel to Big Ditch. Yeah. Yeah. Rusty Chain's pretty I good. I like too. Rusty Chain. That's the thing for me. I like the Rusty, Rusty Chain. Chain. But I only like Rusty Chain on draft. Very different on draft. Oh, yeah. All of them are, aren't they? Yeah. They're very different on draft. Uh, Ellicott Brew's uh, Blueberry is really good. If you like Blueberry Ale. Your Surgeon really says good. pretty good. There's a lot of local breweries. A lot. There's yes, a lot. Yes. And they're there's all Twelve phenomenal. Gates. There's. Um, oh, yeah. yeah I like, I've, I've tried them all I, pretty much for the most part. And I, I do enjoy them all. Uh, for different reasons, though. Like, I like the, the Big Ditch Hay Burner for a different reason why I would like uh, 12 Gates, you know, pale. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's very, I think it's very different. I'm not a beer connoisseur, though. It'd like, be fun to do a beer, a beer tour with a bunch of the Hashtag Nation guys. Just go oh, out and get a beer tour together. I would love to do that. That would be a lot of That'd fun. That would be so much fun. If you want us to get that together in the comments section, leave it. we got to convince. We have to make sure that our family will come pick us up because I can't promise we'd be responsible. <laughs> Um, but we're there's gotta be a, a party bus. There's gotta be a beer tour. I, 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 there's I, wine tours. There's enough breweries. There's gotta be a beer tour. There's gotta be. Uh, but then uh, there's the um, Brickyard Brewing Company uh -huh. in Lewiston. Yes, they're they're pretty good too. Uh -huh. They got they got some nice selections there. And, yeah, but like there's I said, there's I, a lot. It's not just flying bison anymore like it used to be. There's a bunch. Yeah, there's a bunch. Oh, but I said though, like before, I. I'm not a beer connoisseur. Like, I will drink Coors Light or Bud Light. Or, yeah. But it's because I got if, if you talk to some of our uh, cohorts, it's because I have a grudge against myself. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's why. <laughs> Let's jump around a little bit from the community tab. Uh, Paul Berg uh, asks, do we actually have something special this year or are we just blowing smoke up our own asses? Seems like it's par for the course for a Bills fan. I know, right? Um, but I, from a technical standpoint, Paul, I, I understand your, I understand your your uh, skepticism because we've been burned by the Bills so much. But I understand. But from a talent perspective, I don't think I've seen on paper going into a season a lot of the question marks were addressed with this team. But like, if you go back for seasons past five, ten, fifteen years, okay. This is going to be a weak point of our team. How are they going to cover it up? This is going to be a weak point. This is going to be a weak point. I think that the hope is is not misplaced here. Yeah. I, I think the, the major thing you see different is that while the Bills signed a lot of guys to like these one- and two-year deals to try and quick fix a lot of issues, mm -hmm. um, Bills in years past would have signed a couple guys to kind of maybe three-year deals and a little bit more money, and now you're stuck with that player, right? So I think the approach is very different, but this is going to be an incredibly hard team to make. Bills are going to be cutting team players that will start for other teams. It's going to happen. Yeah. They're going to be cutting starters, and, and that's what good organizations do is they fill their team with talent, and then guess what? You're going to have to make a decision. And unfortunately, sometimes you gamble right and sometimes you gamble wrong. Football is a game of attrition, and the Bills are going to walk away from this offseason and it's very possible by week six we're gonna be saying, "Oh, I can't believe we cut this guy. Look, he's burning it up in in Baltimore." Oh yeah, that's that's always yeah, highly the, possible. Highly that's always possible. the thing. That's always the thing that the Bills uh, you fear, you know, in, in that respect. Oh, we got rid of this guy. Why do we get rid of him? Well, it didn't fit the scheme or the system they wanted to go. They right. thought he would, he didn't. But the thing about it is this: that I like is that you have a team now. In the past. Bills had to overspend for certain free agents to get them to Buffalo. And then when they got here, they are just collecting a check. Right. And they weren't all out. Now, because of the process that has been established, right. the, the framework and everything that's going on, players are coming here on one- or two-year deals because either they want to stay here or or the prove-it deals, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, to try to you know uh, get paid for a, more, a longer deal. But that's what's happening now. Guys, right. guys are actually gravitating toward the process, right. and I think that's the biggest difference as well. So Snarl asks us about offensive philosophy. So my ears perked up. I know. Snarl, well, Snarl's hilarious. I, I I know he's a good time. <laughs> um, so and I think it's fair to say you look at Allen's arm 
and you look at how many times that he, you know, plays broke down, and his his eyes were 50 yards downfield, right? He's looking for that yeah. long pass. Yeah. And about the Bills that. went and got a bunch of quick twitch guys who can get open underneath. Now he got a bunch of. He signed Dave, you know, you signed David Sills. You signed um, uh, who's the other uh, the other smaller frame wide receiver? Uh, his name escapes me. The Bills signed another UDFA that fits a similar profile. I don't remember. Uh, you signed Beasley. You signed John Brown. Um, so you got guys that can get open now, right? So from an offensive philosophy standpoint, how many times do you see the Bills rushing a game that aren't QB-based? And do you think the Bills are going to depend on the long ball or not? Or do you think at this point the Bills are going to, you know, try and threaten with the long ball, but that's not really where their offense is? So what's your, what's your philosophy walking in? Oh, God. It's so difficult to try to figure out what Dable's going to do because I never know what he's going to do. But if you want to talk about, I'll go back to a previous episode. Why is Shady so dangerous? Other than the fact that he's a great uh, instinctive runner. Why is he so dangerous? The threat of going outside has guys overplay, and he cuts it up behind him. The threat, not that he's going to every time go outside, the threat of him going outside. So like you just said, the threat of the, the deep threat is one of those things that you're going to have to account for, which opens up things underneath. Right. Then, what Dable has to do, in my eyes, I know I'm not a professional here, mm-hmm. but when they start to adjust to those underneath routes, that's when you start seeing, in the middle of the third quarter, a 60-yard bomb for a touchdown because you've accounted for that, you adjusted for that, you're playing chess, not checkers. Mm-hmm. The thing that Allen gives you, that we talked about a lot last year, and it, not every offense can have this. There's probably only about seven offenses in, in the NFL that have this. You have to cover 100 by 53 with yeah. Allen. Not everybody, not every team you have to do that. So they're saying, okay, our philosophy, let's say, for, give me a weak arm quarterback. Give me a weak so guy. Chad a weak Pennington. Arm. Chad Pennington. Let's say Chad Pennington's in. You drop, he drops Tom back. Brady. Wait, Tom Brady. What's wrong with me? Tom Brady. Okay. Brady's in the game. What the, what the defensive philosophy could be is to – Overload his one side, because I don't. I don't like Brady because he doesn't throw deep. Yeah. So you have him try to roll right. You cut off half of the field because he can. Allen can hit that on that side, rolling right. to his right. That's why you always got to cover all the field, so that you got that threat. You got now deep threats mm-hmm. like with Foster and Brown. Yep. You got Be- you got Beasley underneath, along with a couple you know new tight ends, um, with Zay Jones and a lot of those guys. You got the threat of going outside. If I had to ballpark a number, I'd say it would depend on how the defense comes into that week mm-hmm. and what their strengths are. Because the mark of a good coach is not only exploiting their weaknesses, it's exploiting theirs while covering up your own at the same right. time. Yeah. So um, what they have to do, I, 15 to 20 runs a game that aren't Allen, Okay, I'm fine with that. Because yeah. that means that you're generating first downs, you're controlling the clock, you're giving your defense enough time to rest, yeah. which is one of the complaints we had last year yeah. was they weren't letting the defense rest enough because by the mid-third, early fourth quarter, the defense was gassed. Yeah, the Bills were terrible in, in drives that didn't generate a first down. Oh, like, yeah. They were awful. It was so bad. But, again, you, you, you look, and a lot of fans point at the offensive line and say, well, that's the offensive line's fault. Well, you did have four, four, four different starting quarterbacks last year. So, yeah, that's... I mean, you have to – kind of have to weigh this a little bit and say, you know, uh, where truthfully was was all of the fault. You can't really evolve an offense over the course of a season and adapt when you're constantly hitting the reset button at quarterback. You can't do it. You, yeah, with the, the thing that Allen gives you now, and the other thing else, consistency. If you can start developing consistency, all right, this is one of our bread. Let's say was one of our bread and butter plays. We like running. We like running all the time. Boom, boom. If we're in this scenario with this guy, we'll run it like this. If it's in this scenario, or this guy, then we'll run it like this. You can't do that with multiple quarterbacks, multiple linemen, multiple wide receivers. So, as early as possible, they got to get their guys, especially on the offensive side of the ball, because it's a lot easier to adjust the defense. Mm-hmm. Offensive side of the ball, they got to get their guys in there. They got to get their guys gelling quickly. So, I wouldn't be surprised if they're starting five offensive linemen were named really quick. After the bloodbath of guards, I don't know because you have to gel quickly with yeah, that. Yeah, but offensive we didn't line. see that last year either, though. It was just a I mean, last year was a rotation. tryout. Last year constant was a tryout rotation. for everybody. Like, you know what? We actually had it mentioned on the on the on the community tab. We forgot Teller. Yeah, 
I yeah, we did. But he has practice squad. He does. If if the Bills were going to run saying. the ball forty five times a game, I'm in on Wyatt Teller because he's super aggressive. <laughs> but if you're not running the ball forty five times a game, Teller needs some development. I know. If, I there's understand. a lot of technical issues. Well, there's a reason. There's two reasons. He was a fifth rounder, and they went out and got past blocking centric. Right. Guards. Teller's going to be a great run. in goal line situations. He's oh, going to yeah. look like a stud in those packages. Yeah. But that's where he is. And Teller's at a size where you could put him out as like, you could put him on, on the end as like a big TE. As, yeah. as pass eligible. Stop. Just saying. The same he wants to join he goes, Dawkins in the, in the he goes touchdown throw, reception club? Teller throws some boys in that run blocking game. Yeah. But not, not when it comes to pass blocking. So, but getting back to no, I was saying, like, if they run 15, 20 times a game, if they pass 15, 20 times a game, as if that's your if that's your goal going into it, I, I can understand it. But you don't have three running, three starting caliber running backs because you you only want to run the ball fourteen times. Um, last one on the community staff for right now. Do we see the Bills signing any um, any free any more free agents in this offseason? <laughs> Uh, that was from John Patrick. I I really don't feel that way at this point. Is Johnny alluding to Ndamukong Sue, who's still not signed? The, I mean, the Bills have the space for him. I mean, because we had a we had a we had a comment. I can't remember who. That's why I'm so awful. At the but there's some dynamic issues there, you know. Like that's well, the I don't reason think he's why... going to look at the Bills as a contender. And Sue's at a position where he's going to want to play for a contender. You know, and he's, I'm sure he's happy waiting till week three to get signed by the Patriots for $3 million or $4 million. He wants to, he's. That's crazy. That's, that's the deal. I think he's perfectly happy waiting this one out because there's going to be a team that's looking for the move and he'll be the move, you know, and that's, and that's okay. Yeah. If you had to name, John Patrick also mentioned, if you had to name the weakest position on the team, what is it? Offensive coordinator. 